Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Petrudo. Today we are going to make these 10-sided utensil holders. This is a project from my newest book, Make Your Own Kitchen Tools. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Check it. This is a project that comes from my newest book, Make Your Own Kitchen Tools. There's a bunch of different kitchen projects in this book. And today we're going to do a really simple utensil holder. It's got 10 sides and you don't need a lot of wood for this. This is a half inch thick by five and a half inches wide and 38 inches long. If you don't have a way to plane your boards down to a half inch thick, usually your hardwood dealer can sell you half inch thick board or plane it down for you. I am going to make two of them. I have some maple for one and then some walnut for another one. All of my wood comes from KenCraft. You can visit them at KenCraftCompany.com. They are located here in Toledo, Ohio, but they do sell online. You're going to notice that I'm going to use a super big and fancy table saw. You do need a table saw, but it doesn't need to be super big and fancy. You just need one with a good fence and something where you can tilt the blade and cut angles. All of the dimensions are in the book, so let's head to the table saw and start cutting. I've got my miter gauge here at the table saw that's going to allow me to cross cut these boards. I've got a magnetic stop on here so I can make them all the same length. And I'm making two of them, so I'm going to have four sections of the walnut and four sections of the maple. So now I'm going to set the blade height to about half the thickness and then move my fence in and we're going to cut a groove on the bottom of all of these boards. This groove is going to hold the plywood bottom and whichever face I like the least, I'll have facing towards the inside. I highly suggest using some sort of paddle to hold this down and up against the fence. Typically when a board is longer this way, you don't use a fence. These are nice and small and that paddle is going to allow us to have a nice safe cut. So now that I have that cut on the bottom there, I'm going to do the same thing on the outside, but a little bit lower and a little bit less deep. This is going to allow us to add a decorative inlay. Totally optional. Don't need to do this, totally optional, but I think it's pretty cool. So now I'm gonna add a second decorative element and that is cut a 45 degree chamfer along the bottom and along the top. In the book, it shows me doing this at a later step on the router, but as many of you know, in woodworking, there are multiple ways to do nearly everything. So I've got my blade set to 45 degrees and I'm just going to take a little bit off of each side on all the boards. So now I'm going to cut little thin strips of inlay pieces that's going to fit in that groove there. This takes quite a few tries to get that perfect thickness. It took me one, two, three, four, five tries to get the right size in there. When, when I'm cutting small pieces like this, I like to have that small piece on the outside of the blade. So I have a magnetic stop here on my table saw and then I can take my piece and bump it up against that stop and then bring my fence over and then lock that down. And then every time I run a piece through, I've got to reset my fence like so. But it, this is just a much safer cut to have that small piece on the outside of the blade instead of being trapped between the blade and the fence and coming back at you or just ruining the piece or really it's, that's just a much harder cut. So easier going this way. And I don't even know what this is. This is some sort of exotic wood that I got from Kencraft a long time ago. Um, but 
Have no idea, no idea what this is. Now we'll just throw in a little bit of glue. Throw that, that's actually way too much glue. Throw that in there. And then we can cut off the excess. You wanna make sure one side is flush with the edge there. The glue is now dry. I cut my inlay a little bit too tall, so it's sticking up, so I'm just gonna sand it flush. Back here at the table saw, I'm going to rip a bunch of strips. I should have 10 for each utensil container. So now you'll want to set your blade to 72 degrees. I find that these little digital angle gauges are great for something like this. I want to cut that angle so it meets right up with this edge and I'm going to sneak up on that perfect cut. So the first time I run that through, I know it's not going to be perfect. And then I can nudge my fence over a little bit and sneak up until I get right up on that edge. And then from there, you don't move the fence. So then you can flip the piece around and do the other side. And I'm going to do that with all of my pieces. I should have two extra pieces here. That way I can choose the 10 best when it comes time for the glue up. Use a straight edge to line everything up and then use some painter's tape along the outside to hold everything together. Coil it together and then tape it shut. And this is going to allow us to draw our bottom. So I just got a piece of 1 8 inch plywood that will fit into the kerf that we made earlier. So here I'm drawing the inside dimensions, which would be too small. So then I am offsetting that with a ruler and I'm just eyeballing this and then making that a little bit bigger. So now we can cut this out. You can use a coping saw or a jigsaw. I'm gonna use the bandsaw and you don't have to be real precise because it's going to be hidden in the kerf. This is one of those times where close enough is good enough. We're gonna drill a drainage hole in here. So if you throw in a wet utensil, the water has somewhere to go. Although obviously you don't wanna do that. This does not take a lot of glue. This is all long grain to long grain. So no reinforcements, not much glue at all. And you wanna be careful. I don't want too much squeeze out on the inside. We can stick our bottom in here. This, this is so satisfying. Oh, forgot to add glue on the, on the last piece there. That looks really good. There are no gaps in there. All thanks to that digital angle gauge. That thing is pretty darn accurate. So I'm gonna let that sit and dry for an hour or two. And if I find any gaps, we'll fill that in. And before we do that, and before we sand and add finish, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Maybe you're like me and you're a woodworker, crafter, and maker, and you wanna learn how to market your work. Skillshare has a ton of classes to help you learn photography, marketing, and video editing. Personally, I like taking classes that gets me thinking creatively, and one of my top 10 favorite YouTubers, Dan Mace, has two courses on Skillshare. Dan's video style is a huge inspiration to my channel and he has a course on filmmaking and telling stories that I recommend to anybody thinking about creating video. Skillshare focuses on learning meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Do something today you couldn't do yesterday with short classes designed for real life. There are also live classes and workshops so you can learn with like-minded people and exchange feedback. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Again, that link is down below in the video description. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to these utensil holders. I've got a tiny little gap right there. Probably won't even see it once you get some oil on there, but just in case, We'll put a little bit of glue on there. This is just some CA glue. And then sand it, and it's gonna fill in that tiny little gap. So I've gone ahead and sanded everything, making sure not to round over the chamfers on there. And now I'm just putting on some oil. This is Odie's oil. Nothing special, except it's really easy to use. It's kind of kind of pricey, but I like that it's super easy. You just kind of rub it on and rub it off, and that's, that's about it. It smells good. Uh, it is food safe. You don't have to use food safe for these since you're not preparing food on them. You can find this project in my latest book, Make Your Own Kitchen Tools. There are a bunch of projects in there. I also have Make Your Own Cutting Boards. There are like 15 different cutting board projects in there, as well as the new Bandsaw Box book. You can get signed copies of these books on my website at makesomething.com. I made two of these pretty quick. You could probably batch out a whole bunch in a single day to sell at craft shows or online at places like Etsy. I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'd like to thank KenCraft for supplying the wood for today's project. That is gonna wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.